All right, you guys, welcome back to the channel. I am so excited to film this video, you guys don't even know. Most of you guys probably know me from my RAV4 SUV camping setup. And in the last video, we kind of had a surprise vehicle that unfortunately we didn't get to keep, but uh, this time we have a new vehicle that we get to keep and I bought it, I own it outright, and I'm so excited to share it with you guys. You guys probably already know by the title of this video. Yes, we did buy a van and I am so excited to finally get to share it with you guys. It has seriously been such a long time coming. I made a couple videos I was talking about how we didn't know what we wanted to do. We have been looking seriously for over a year and I've been ready to buy it and finally we have it but it's been a long journey to get there and in this video I obviously want to show you guys the van but I also want to explain kind of why we upgraded from the RAV4 setup and why we ended up going with this van because we were actually pretty close to buying two other vans before this one and I was pretty set in stone on wanting like a sprinter, a high roof, something that we could actually stand up in. I was pretty set in stone in that. I want to explain the journey of how we ended up with the Econoline. We did a little bit of a makeshift setup so that we can actually take this out on a road trip as soon as possible. It's been freezing here but hopefully ASAP we're going to take it out. So we'll also show you guys that little setup that we have. So yeah I guess without further ado let's just show you guys the van. All right so the van is a 2006 Ford Econoline E150 with 120,000 miles on it. Definitely the most miles I've ever purchased a car for but it's been in great condition. It was a fleet vehicle before this in Florida, so there's absolutely no rust on the bottom or all over the body. The only vehicle that we saw that didn't have any rust at all, even with the new ones that we looked at. And it's a 4.6 liter V8 engine. I'm not the best at cars. Andrew, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's got a lot of power and it also has an upgraded suspension. So the previous owner actually put, I don't know what parts he exactly replaced, but he upgraded the suspension so that it can hold the weight of what an E350 or not hold the weight but it can pull the weight of what an E350 would but this is actually a 150 van. Now I don't know if there's a lift or anything but there's definitely a lot more room here between the wheel wells than normal vans that I've seen Econolines like this but uh, it definitely gives us a little bit more ground clearance. I just know that I sit higher than most pickups and a lot of trucks on the road so that's pretty cool. Now it's in really good condition but there are a few like cosmetic things like the little scratches and bumps on the tailgate and stuff. It's got this sweet, how's my driving sticker. So <laughs> that's pretty cool, but uh, obviously not. We're gonna find a way to remove that. And it is a passenger van, so it does have 360 degree windows. And we'll talk about that in a little bit, but we actually wanted the windows. Most people, when they're buying vans, try to avoid windows, but that's actually something that we wanted. It's a 2006, so it doesn't have power locks or windows. It's what we gotta do roll the windows up like that and lock it yourself but that's not a big deal it's one less thing to break all of this is in super good condition the this seat's not ripped that seat has one tiny little rip on that side but compared to the other vans that we looked at these seats were just all ripped up so this to me is honestly in really good condition and another reason i love this van specifically is the color it's not white like all the classic white creepy vans that you see not that they're creepy but i just like that it's a little bit different we did install a backup camera and a radio because the radio didn't even play CDs or have any type of Bluetooth connection. And we installed a backup camera just so that I can see. The plan is that we are gonna do a full build on this uh, eventually. And we're gonna kind of turn it into a mobile office slash cabin for us. And yeah, that's really all I can think of on the outside. So I guess let's take you guys inside and show you guys the little makeshift setup that we have. So just a quick tour, I guess, starting here. There was no like glove box or middle compartment. So this is actually the old footrest I used to use at my desk when I worked a desk job. It just has like snacks and random stuff in it. Um, we have a little fold out table, which I had no idea we were gonna be able to fit something like this in here. We got two bins under here for storage. Right now we just have like warmer clothes cause it's like freezing today. It's 30 degrees in Michigan. Um, this will be where we kind of cook and also do work for right now and uh yeah the bed setup so pretty simple for right now to be honest with you when we bought the van it actually had one row of seats right here whoever used it removed the other ones but we took out this seat and now we have way more space than honestly i know what to do with it's definitely nothing fancy but this is pretty much just the platform that we have in the rav4 um, we just took it right out of the RAV4, put it in here. We had a futon from our old apartment that we basically just took the cushion from and put it right on top of this. And we put it facing this way. I honestly think we can sleep that way. We are planning to swivel this seat around. You see that in a lot of van builds and I actually already ordered the part that we need to do it and it should be here in a couple of days. So 
that will be super nice and I think it'll just open it up a lot more in here. For the floor, we actually just kept what it came with, which was just this like dirty mat and we just put a little rug over it with a little landing mat for our shoes. And this is our little Mr. Buddy heater, which has been great. It's been keeping us warm while we're working on the van. And we are actually about to head on on our first road trip to test out this setup and it's gonna be way below freezing temperatures. So we're really hoping this is gonna work. So far it's worked great to help us while we've just been kind of working in the van. Both of these windows and the windows and the doors right behind you guys pop out. So when we cook or whatever, we'll have ventilation and we are planning to put a max air fan right here. I'm getting pretty cold and I think that's pretty much all I can show you guys for right now because it's a pretty simple setup, but this cost us nothing because we had all of this stuff. So this is just what we had put in the van and hopefully it'll be good for our first road trip. All right, so I brought Andrew into the mix on this one so that we can try to explain to you guys why we upgraded from the RAV4 and how we ended up in a van like this versus a fancier spring or something you can stand up in. You guys know that I love car camping and SUV camping is what started everything for us. For the first like couple of years, we camped just on our, there was no build in our car. We just kind of slept on the uneven ground of whatever, my first starting with my Chevy Equinox and then the RAV4. And once we built the bed platform in that, it made it a little bit more comfortable and more tolerable. And that got us pretty much wherever we wanted to go for weekend trips. And even I think the longest we've camped in that thing was like four or five days at a time. We are keeping the RAV4. We're not getting rid of that. We're not gonna be living in this van full time. It's just gonna kind of be like a mobile office slash cabin for us. So you still will see some SUV camping adventures on this channel, it won't only be van stuff. But back to why we finally made the decision to upgrade to the van versus the RAV4. And the main reason is just having more space, wouldn't you say? Headroom, space. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Headroom and space. How tall are you? 6'3". Andrew is 6'3", and he can sit up in this. We're sitting on our bed platform right now, and he has like three inches of room. But just being able to somewhat stand up and move around like this is, is insane. We The RAV4 was literally just a bed. There was no room for anything else. We couldn't cook inside. We couldn't store anything except stuff underneath us. It was just a mess trying to change, do anything. You could not sit up straight. Even, you couldn't even sit like this. You basically had to be completely laying down and it was pretty much only for sleeping. Yeah, you would crawl into bed. Yeah. And crawl out of bed or roll out of the like little door space that you had to get in and out. Yeah, <laughs> not ideal to say the least. And in here we can fit that exact same bed platform that was in the RAV4 plus a fold out table, bins. There's tons of room in here. It's just unreal. The bottom line is that we just needed more space to be able to work, sleep, cook and just relax comfortably so we can extend our trips the like i said earlier the longest we've probably camped in the rav4 total was like four to five days because after so long you just get so sick of moving things around we had to move all of our stuff to be able to sleep where now we can just pull up somewhere park and hop in the back and we're ready for sleep you don't have to move anything it's amazing and a lot of the jobs that we've been getting recently have been travel jobs like last year for instance we went all the way to wisconsin and then ironwood all within the same month and we drove all the way to wisconsin and then back and then all the way to ironwood and back because i had to edit and do a bunch of stuff for those jobs before the next one and I couldn't comfortably do that in the RAV4. We drove back and forth, which just makes no sense. And that leads me into the next thing, which is pretty much just wanting to do slow travel. For those of you guys that don't know, I am a full-time photographer and that is how we make our money. I spend the whole time taking pictures, taking video, rushing around to try to get everything in. Andrew can attest to it. It can get stressful sometimes. Thank you for dealing with me. But the whole point is that we want to be able to just stay where we're at so we can go somewhere for a week and just hang out. Like right now, after we're done filming this video, I can just sit back here and edit it immediately. Gone are the days of taking multiple elevator trips in a hotel to bring in all of our stuff <laughs> only to do it again in a day. <laughs> yeah, and when you think about it like that, it honestly makes no sense. That's what initially the light bulb moment went off. We have been saving for a down payment on either a house or some type of land or permanent living situation for us, but we truly just don't know where we want to live. Both of us have lived in southeastern Michigan pretty much our entire life, and I have to say that I, this is not really where I want to plant my roots. So for now, we're planning to travel in this thing and figure out where we want to live. So the first van that we were going to get was back in April, my friend Tom, shout out to you, Tom. He's been a huge help throughout this whole process, but my friend Tom's aunt was selling a 
1992, the same year that I was born, Chevy G20. And this was, like I said, back in April of 2021. And it was, uh, it had like 60,000 miles. Um, it had a little bit of like paint chips and stuff, uh, but it looked to be in amazing condition and it was already pre-built out, ready to go. So we basically drove all the way to Ohio and in my head, I had already committed to buying this van. When we went to do the inspection before we bought the car, uh, we took it to a mechanic. You should always get a pre-purchase inspection anytime you're buying a used vehicle. So we took that van to the get the inspection done and I was so excited and Unfortunately, during the inspection, they found out that the entire, what was it called? Subframe. Subframe. The entire subframe of the van was completely shot. And he basically said, I don't know how you guys got it here, but this van is really not safe to drive. And you guys do not even understand how heartbroken I was. We drove like five hours from Detroit to go pick up this van and it was gorgeous. It looked, it, it was like the vintage vibe, the old school Chevy G20 van. Oh my God. It was so cool. Um, and I was ready to just, that was $5,000. We were going to just buy that and head out on the road at that moment. So needless to say that drive home was just heartbreaking. So after the heartbreak of losing the G20, I was still set in stone on getting one. And I said to Andrew, I want you to be able to stand up and cook. You are the chef in this relationship. I wanted you to stand up. I was very gung ho on not settling. I wanted something new that we would be able to get a decent warranty with, something reliable that I wouldn't have to worry about breaking down. A couple of months went by and we were looking, but trying to purchase a vehicle, anyone that's ever bought a van knows how difficult it can be on Facebook Marketplace, on Craigslist. But then I don't remember when this was. It was probably like November, I wanna say, like late November of 2021 where my friend Anthony was selling his van. He had a 2017 Dodge Promaster high roof extended. So pretty big vehicle comparatively to what we were looking at before. Um, and it had like 120,000 miles and he wanted 27,000 for that. And I was ready to pay for it. I, we were, I was convinced again, he had already done kind of a little build. So it was pretty much ready to go. Now I didn't want to pay 27,000 in cash and completely wipe out my savings because the whole point of getting a van was I saved up enough that we should have been able to buy a van and go on a road trip and live pretty comfortably even if we made no money but buying that $27,000 van in cash would have completely wiped out my savings so I decided to finance it and that's when the second nightmare came in. Um, anybody that is either self-employed or has ever bought a cargo van or a commercial vehicle trying to get a loan on that especially when you're self-employed is pretty much impossible and we were pricing out what our build would look like if we were to buy like a sprinter van or a pro master and we were going to do a full out build and I, you guys have probably seen the meme that i'm talking about live on a van down by the river for 40k or something like that yeah that was becoming our reality we were pushing 40 50 thousand dollars and that's just insane when i stopped to think about that i do not want to spend 40 or 50 thousand dollars to do this i know it could be done without spending that much money and that's when andrew was like why don't we look at passenger vans they're pretty much the same as cargo vans except they have windows they at least have some windows that will pop yeah once we figured out that was an option i then again started looking i've never even bought anything on craigslist or facebook marketplace but somehow by i don't know who is looking out for us but i was just scrolling facebook marketplace and then all of a sudden this van popped up and it was literally less than four miles away from my house which is crazy because we were looking at vans in other states across the country and this van was just sitting here less than five minutes away from my house and i saw it and i'm like fifteen thousand. that that seems like a lot so it looked like it was in good condition so i messaged the seller he said it was still available and actually brought my dad with me to look at it because i don't really know much about vans and fun fact my dad actually had a ford econo line i think it was like a 70 something it was like a 70 something ford econo line that he lived out of for a couple of years when he lived back in oregon he took it to mexico he went all over in his so i since he has owned one before i figured i'd bring him with me took a look at it and he actually was more excited than i was he was like this is an amazing van you need to buy it it's a great deal and he said that at fifteen thousand. so once we looked at it we saw everything we saw that there was really no rust everything was in good condition the previous seller had tons of receipts 
receipts for all of the work that he did and all the maintenance on it. Um, so we took it to a mechanic for an inspection and even the inspection came back as what the mechanic basically said, this is an amazing vehicle and it has no rust. You don't see vans like this anymore. I'm like, oh, okay. So the seller was, like I said, it was listed for 15 grand. I'm sure you guys are all wondering the magic question, how much did we pay for this van? And I guess since you guys made it through all of my blabbing, I can tell you. So once the mechanic told me that, I was pretty much sold and we made an offer of 10,000 and he accepted and uh, yeah, now we own this van. So I just think it's crazy that we found this van on Facebook. Honestly, I'm so glad that we did not go through with a fancier van or spent more money on this because this is for ten thousand dollars plus adding some stuff that we put into our van this is way more than we could ever imagine to be honest if we would have spent fifty or sixty thousand dollars on a van and then tried to build it out it, we would have never used it i would be way too afraid to use it i wouldn't want to take it down any back roads or actually put it to the test so this thing is a perfectly in the middle between something that's really nice and fancy and something that's really old and a you know, a piece of crap where I think this is pretty much in the middle, maybe even leaning more towards the nicer side. But uh, yeah, we're crossing our fingers. We don't have any major mechanical problems. I know there's going to be some things, but I'm just so excited that we finally have something after so long. And uh, yeah, I am just stoked and I cannot wait to take this thing on a road trip. Now that we got it all outfitted and ready to go, I think we're gonna go in the next couple of days. It's supposed to be really cold and freezing, but I do not wanna wait, I just wanna go, so. All right, so that's pretty much it. I can't really think of anything else. I definitely blabbed on. Anything else you wanna say? I think you covered everything, but I mean, if they have any questions, they can leave them in the comments. Yeah, leave us any questions you guys have in the comments. There's gonna be a blog post that probably will go into more detail about the van and the process of us buying it um, that I'll link in the description. And uh, yeah, hopefully we will get out in the next couple of days to test this thing out. And the next video you guys will see will be us uh, camping in freezing temperatures in the van for our first road trip. Talk about a way to test it out. But, uh, but yeah. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it this far, you are a real one. And uh, enjoy the rest of your week. And I'll see you guys in the next